tell me more about yourself and what led you to develop a product in the wine industry specifically yeah so um, uh, yeah i could obviously talk for 2 hours about that so let's keep it a little bit short it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a little bit of a unique story because i come from a very small place they call the Faroe Islands which is in the middle of the North Atlantic but I also uh, when we built the vino we did it in in Denmark out of Copenhagen and it is a you know non wine producing country uh, as such small things but and and there's no wine industry as such obviously people drink a lot of wine and so on but I think somehow that was an important thing because we were very much wine drinkers like the casual wine drinkers and not the industry it's it's a yeah. uh, it's a very different if you want to build a product for for an expert or someone who's in the industry compared to somebody who is more a consumer and we were very clear that hey we want to build the best product for like normal wine drinkers casual wine drinkers so so i think actually that was more important uh, than we thought at the time that you think why hasn't somebody in bordeaux built this a long time ago and they hadn't because maybe they didn't know what to do it they didn't understand the the sort of normal wine drinker as well as we did True. Can you Question. tell me more about Vivino and uh, what was what does the business model of the app look like? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So first and foremost, and this has been the same from from day one. It's about helping people drink better wine. And when we started out, it was a lot about going into a supermarket, into a grocery store, whatever. You know, seeing this wall of wine and then figuring out what should I buy. Like Scala bottle is this good? Not so good, and so on and so forth. and but that sort of thing of helping people drink better wine is still the same thing right but what we've done now is that we have a business model where we are a marketplace and people can buy wine uh, through the app um your is your do you think your country is set to india in the app it probably is right yeah so, so we so have if, yeah if you want to play around you could actually um you could actually go into the app and say you're in france or something and then okay. the app will change quite a bit actually oh yeah when i was in france i used to use this app to buy wine in the supermarket exactly. for the stores and i used to have a lot of options yeah exactly and and also you can actually buy through the app and get it delivered to your home uh, right. so that's that's our business model right so when people buy through the app uh, we get a commission on everything that's sold through the app so so that's the okay. business model all right That's yeah. nice. Yeah. And so, what were the challenges that you faced while developing Vivino, and what were yeah. the learnings yeah. from developing this app? Oh my God, a lot. Um, <laughs> so let me give you just just a couple of things. First and foremost, you know, when it comes to the challenges, I mean, there's no doubt what I think the big biggest challenge was, and and it was that there was no, uh, what should I say, consolidated data on wine. Like there was no. uh no total database of wine in the world like i mean with movies and with books there are these databases and music even that are pretty okay there was nothing like that in wine so we've built every single data point ourselves uh totally from scratch and that like was the really really big challenge and it's not like a product where there's only 1000 products we have 12 million products in the app so a shitload of products uh and i think around 300,000 producers so a lot of producers a lot of different wines uh so um, so that was without a doubt the, the biggest challenge i think one oh, of yeah. the biggest learnings is that that and this sounds really really basic but when you have a really long list of things you need to do uh, in this case just adding data on these wines figuring out what what is most important is really really important So so what we learned quickly was that the wines that we need to have data on are the ones that people actually drink. If you have 12 million wines and you start at the bottom of the list, you're never going to be done. But if you start at the right end, then within a year or two you can actually build okay data. You could also spend a year or two at the bottom of the list and have nothing. So uh, listening to the users what they actually drink is incredibly important. right so consumer research and what they were drinking was very important in this case right yeah 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 exactly and how did you manage to dominate the wine search engine market like there are so many apps like wine searcher and all these how did you manage to dominate that space yeah it's it is a question we've asked ourselves many many times right um 
I think, I think if I want to mention a few things. So one of the important things was that we focused on a specific audience. Um, so a lot of the apps that were out there, let's say, so you have some wine education, right? So you know about wine. Uh, so you're actually not necessarily the target audience for this, right? We, we wanted to build the app for people that don't know that much about app and wanted to learn more. Obviously, the app got better and better, so it also became relevant for you. But, but in the beginning, it was all about helping like the, the people that didn't know much about why. And that was not very common among the other. The other apps were like some experts saying, hey, we know a lot about wine. We should make a wine up. That's fine, right. but now we're going to make a wine app for you and nobody else is going to want that. You want to build it for the big middle where people actually drink. So I think that's, uh, that's one thing. The other thing that, that I think was really important was a relentless focus on the data, meaning and the one single use case is, which is this bottle of wine I have in front of me, is it good or not so good? That's all it's about. So focus all your energy on making that better. Like the design of the app in the beginning was not very good. All those things we just said, look, we got to focus on one thing, get that right, and then we'll build the other stuff later. And that is, is really, really important. So how do you think technology has evolved in the wine industry over the years? Well, not enough. I mean, I mean it's, not, it's an old school industry, right? It's an industry that um, is very traditional. The people that, people that make money in Bordeaux or Burgundy, they've done this. They've had success with doing the same thing for hundreds of years. And, and when, you're, when your way of doing things is that, then obviously it moves slower, right? So I think for, especially in those producing technology is coming very, very slowly, very, very slowly, but it's okay. But I think what we've built is, is exciting because, uh, you know, we, we, we built the first real database of wine, which includes every wine in the world. We have a, we have ratings on all these wines. We all know what they taste like. It's very, very unique. And obviously, data is data, but technology has enabled that data, right? So I think that's super important. Right. So you must have focused more on the new world side of wine, right? New world countries like Australia. Sweden. When I mean, you started not, off, probably. Not, not really. Honestly, we just, we just thought about one thing is that whatever people are drinking, that's what we focus on. So... We okay. didn't make any difference between New Zealand or, or Portugal or France. If, if that wine was three people said they want to drink that wine, good. We'll put some data on that. So it was all about that. Okay. So how do you think that beverage brands can integrate innovation in their models without moving uh, away from their vision? Yeah. Like first, they obviously shouldn't. They should stay with whatever vision they have. But, but I mean... It's, it's obviously a bigger question and so on, but, but we have to remember that we don't consume anything like we did 20 years ago, right? So we used to you'd read magazines and papers and so on. And I don't do that anymore. Some people do, uh, but my kids are never going to do it. They've never done it and they're never going to do it, right? So if you think you can do build any sort of brand without being digital, well, you're not going to do that. That's just impossible. You have to look at these new technologies, whatever, whatever method that is, is it uh, TikTok or YouTube or whatever, right? So, yeah. I mean, this is, this, this is the only way. There's no, nothing outside digital if you want to talk to future generations. Right. So how do you plan to grow Vivino in the future now? What's the future? Yeah, <laughs> good question. I think, um, well, a few things. We, we always want to have the best product. The, the, Right. We, we've, we've won the market by building the best possible product, I would say. And, and we're going to keep doing that. One of the things that we think is really, really important is, is what we call personalization. So that's one of the biggest things right now. If I, I'm sure you've seen it already, but we have these match for you and so on. I, I don't know yeah, if you see I it on the, it's all individual, right? So yeah, um, that's a big part of our strategy. I mean, first we built all this data on the wines. We built all the data on you, and then now we put those things together. Um, and again, that, that can be incredibly strong to, to drive growth, I think. Right. So content is a very important part of any platform online, yes. especially. So how yes. do you think you, uh, as Vivino, is leveraging it? I think we're, I think, yeah, I think maybe we're, um, 
we're a little bit different in that way because we're obviously I consider data to be content, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so a lot of the content that we have is like super long tail. So individual content on wines and so on. So it's a little bit of a different, different strategy, but, but that's what Reno is all about, right? It's all about uh, the content we have on every single wine. And, and that's why people come to Vino. It's because, hey, I, I, they know everything about wine. They know everything about this particular wine or the region or whatever. So that's, that's core to our strategy. Right. So almost moving towards the end, how did you come up with this name, Vivino? Like, V, of course, comes from wine. But yeah, how yeah, yeah. Was, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was kind of random, honestly. I was just playing on yeah. the keyboard, really. <laughs> um, and and so what could sound good and so on. And then I tried, is there a domain I can buy? And is there a trademark I can register? So I did all kinds of things. And and suddenly this thing, well, this sounds good. I tested it with a few mm-hmm. people. They said, yeah. So we just bought the domain and, and registered a trademark. And said, yeah, this sounds great. And the Italians mm-hmm. love it because they think it's Italian. And yeah. it be. Uh, but it sounds good. It sounds good in almost every yeah. country. Uh, we were adjusting it a little bit for the Chinese market, but apart from that, it's working well in all, all markets. Right. How often do you use the platform? Uh, every day, at least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's not necessarily because I drink, but I always open the app to see what's happening. And, and maybe okay. and, and we, I get updates all the time. I get the beta versions. I get all kinds of things. So, so it's, um, yes, every single day. I don't buy every day, but... Uh, I buy a lot too because I want to see how that works too. And, and recommendations like, okay, the alga says I'm going to like this, then I have to buy it. Mm-hmm. This is a quite difficult question, but what, which is your favorite wine on the Vino? Yeah, I never say that. I, whatever the whatever Vino says I should drink, I drink. So <laughs> I, I, I like some categories, obviously, right? But, but then right. I would use the wine explorer and say, hey, you know, what have you got? I don't want to pay. Let's say I want to pay 30 euros. Uh, then I can dig in and say, I want a champagne, I want to pay 30 euros. What have you got? And I think that's a lot of fun. That's it's more nice. fun. To, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's more fun to find something uh, which has a good value than just paying right. a lot for a wine, right? It's, it's, a lot more, it's a lot more sport and it's a, no, no, I only pay 20 euros for this and it's amazing. <laughs> Definitely. So finally, what is your idea of a good life? Wow. Yeah, that's a big question. Talk about big <laughs> questions here, right? I mean... I think I think I think it's about happiness somewhere, right? It's about being in balance and and doing what you enjoy. I think for me, um, I obviously work a lot, uh, but it's not this. And I'm obviously ambitious on some level too. Um, but I, what really drives me and what I enjoy, apart from my family life and all those those moments, is to build something. Um, that's really the driver for me is to build something that that just is incredibly satisfying. It's not not specifically reaching a goal, but building something that people say, oh, that's amazing what you built there. That's a lot of fun. So that's really gratifying for me.